All right, pushing work, pushing work. Pushing work. And I feel like we can call this example B. But let's say that we have a mass, and we can do a free body diagram again. You know, I'll throw in the normal force, but we're not really going to use it this time. And the force due to gravity. And let's say that we, we push on this thing with an applied force, F applied, of 15.0 newtons. Now I'm going to need some help from you guys with the calculators. So if you can have your calculators <coughs> out to help me with some numbers in a couple of minutes. And we're going to say that, uh, well, let's say that this object has a mass, nice round numbers. Let's say that it has a mass of uh, 10 kilograms. And let's come up with some coefficient of kinetic friction. What would you like? 0 0.5. 0 0.05, oh, okay. 0 0.050 zero then. Actually, 0 0.0500, zero zero, just so we can have three sig figs, is our kinetic friction coefficient. And so, the units for kinetic friction coefficient? There aren't any, it's unitless. Yeah, and that goes back to the definition of coefficient of friction. Um, yeah, no, I know, people forget. Mu k is equal to, uh, force due to friction divided by the normal force. And so since both of those forces have newtons as their units, yeah, it's unitless. Okay, so we got to add in our kinetic friction vector as well into our free body diagram. So this is going to be a little bit of a multi-part problem. I want to see how much work gets done by the pusher, first of all, if the pusher pushes this box, this mass, by displacement, and I'm just doing the, the displacement arrow in red so that you can see that it's not a force vector, by displacement of 10 meters. Yeah. What's that? Oh, you finished it? Oh, let me, write, let me write out the question before you give me the answer. So subpart I, work done by a pusher. So work is equal to force times displacement times cosine of theta between those two vectors. The force was equal to 15.0, force applied I should say, is 15.0 newtons. The displacement is 10.0 meters. And the angle between the applied force and the displacement is zero. Yeah. So we could say cos of zero. Oh, we're just talking about the, push, the work done by the pusher. So we're being very careful about the question we're asking right now, okay? So the work done by the pusher, what's the answer? 150. 150 Newton meters, and we just said that that's the same as saying joules. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't well, because the question wasn't about friction, it was just about the work done by the pusher. Let's figure out how much work is done by friction. I think we, think we might be able to squeeze that in over here. done by friction. So we've got work equals force times equals force times displacement times cosine of theta. Now we need to figure out what this force is. So you can have more space on your page to do the layout. And I can see that some people already have the calculation. Fk is equal to mu k times f normal. And f normal could be said to be equal but opposite to mass times acceleration due to gravity in this case because there's no angle applied forces. What does that end up being, Matt? Oh, don't round it to sig figs yet. So 4.905 newtons. And people say, oh, well, let's throw in some positive and negative reference frame stuff here. We don't have to do that when we're dealing with this work equation. And I'll show you why in just a second, okay? So if we put in 4.905 newtons into our force, and we put in 10 meters into our displacement. When I put in my theta value, what's theta in this case? Yeah, 180 degrees. Cosine of one, oh, I'm running out of space. Cosine of 180. And people say, where did the 180 come from? 
Let's make sure we got it. If the displacement is this way, but the applied force over that time by friction was that way, because it was resisting the displacement, the angle between those two vectors is 180 degrees. Yep. It's also 0.49. Oh, 0.49? Thank you. Do people agree on that? 4.9? Okay, 0 0.05 times mass times acceleration due to gravity. It's 0 0.05, not 0 0.5. 4.905? Okay, we'll take it. We'll take it. It's okay. It's a minor calculation issue. Okay, so the numbers are straightened out. 4.905 times 10 is 49.05 newtons. Now, we haven't dealt with that cosine of 180 <coughs> yet. What's cosine of 180? Negative, negative 1. And that's where the negative sign comes from. And that's why we don't have to deal with assigning a positive negative reference stream like we have in previous problems. Now, there's a part, there's a part I, I, I that I want to discuss here. And so I'm going to take this piece of paper. I'm going to fold it up. And anybody that wants this piece of paper afterwards can have it as a free gift, okay? Yeah. Would it be better to solve for the amount of work by um, doing x y minus x a, or doing? We're, you're you're like two steps ahead of me. You're two steps ahead of me. All right. So the next bit is i i i. Find the total work done on the object. And so some people might say work total is going to be equal to the work by the pusher plus the work done by friction. In which case you'd say, okay, so work total, what were those two values again? 150 joules plus negative 49.05 Oh, I call this Newtons. It's actually Newton meters. Oopsie. I didn't catch that. Nobody said anything. Oh, you said something? I didn't listen. Sorry. 150 minus 49.05. I bet you get something like 100 and something. What do you get? 100 points? 100.95. Okay. 100.95 joules. That's the total amount of work that you do. And somebody just proposed, somebody named CC just proposed that there's an alternate way to do this. So let's do the same problem, but first, before finding work by one and work by the other, let's just find F net first, F net for the, the uh, system. And F net for the system, in this case, is just equal to F applied. I'm gonna slide this out of the way. F applied plus force due to friction, which was 15 newtons minus 4.905 newtons. What do we get? 10.95? 10.095, yeah, move it, basically move the decimal place over one here because of the trick of the math. 10.095 newtons. And now if I want to say, well, for a uh, work net or work total is equal to F net times uh, delta D times cosine of theta and you end up having F net being 10.095 newtons and delta D being 10 meters and cosine theta being zero again because F net of course is to the right and the applied force is, I mean the displacement rather is also to the right. So 10 times 10.095 is 100.95 Newton meters, or 100.95 joules. Now we haven't dealt with the sig figs here. This guy, I suppose, had uh, three sig figs, so it really <laughs> rounds off to 101. And this guy here, oops, approximately equal to, is approximately equal also to 101 joules. Okay, equivalent ways of doing it. Finding the F net first, and then using that to find work, 
or finding the work for, for each force over the, that positive displacement, and then adding the works together. <coughs>